In the heart of Australia lies a place where wind and water carved stories long before memory. A place of salt white dunes and shifting light, the Willandra Lakes. Now dry, but once an inland sea that fed life in every direction. It is here, beneath a crescent of ancient sand known as a lunette, that one of humanity's oldest mysteries was found. In 1974, on the desolate shore of Lake Mungo, a geologist brushed aside the dust and uncovered the bones of a man who had lain there for more than 40 millennia. He would be called Mungo Man, and his discovery would ignite decades of debate, challenge the foundations of archaeology, and forever reshape our understanding of the first Australians. The skeleton was ancient, around 42,000 years old, making it the oldest human remains ever found on the continent. But it wasn't just his age that made him extraordinary. It was the care with which he was buried. His body had been laid out deliberately, sprinkled with red ochre, a pigment drawn from the earth and used in rituals around the world to symbolize life, death, and rebirth. It was a message left in color, that even at the edge of the Pleistocene, these early Australians saw death not as an ending, but a passage. This was no accidental grave, it was ceremony, and that meant culture. The bones of Mungo Man told of a people who already understood symbolism, reverence, and the rhythm of existence itself. To scientists, his discovery was like a thunderclap, evidence that deep spiritual behavior existed in Australia tens of thousands of years before it appeared in Europe. But to the Aboriginal communities whose ancestral lands stretched across the lakes, it was something far greater. He was one of their own, a direct link to ancestors who had walked these plains when megafauna roamed and stars blazed brighter through an untouched sky. Yet even as his story was celebrated, it was also contested. For decades, archaeologists argued over what Mungo Man truly represented. Some claimed he belonged to an extinct lineage, an early wave of humans that arrived before the ancestors of modern Aboriginal Australians. The bones, held under controlled study, became symbols of something much larger, a battle between science and identity, between data and tradition, between what could be proved and what had always been known. When the first attempts were made to extract DNA from his remains, scientists hoped for clarity Instead, they found chaos. The results would shake archaeology to its core and spark one of the most heated genetic controversies in modern history. The year was 2001. Across the world, DNA technology was unlocking secrets that had been sealed in bone and dust for tens of thousands of years. And at Lake Mungo, scientists believed they were on the verge of a revelation that would rewrite the story of Australia's first people. Using a process called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, researchers attempted to extract and amplify the fragile genetic code from Mungo Man's ancient bones. The idea was simple in theory. Take a trace of DNA, replicate it millions of times, and make the invisible visible. But in practice, it was like trying to rebuild a song from a single note carried on the wind. The results were shocking. When the sequences were compared to those of living Aboriginal Australians, they didn't match, not even close. The fragments of mitochondrial DNA, the maternal signature passed from mother to child, seemed to fall outside the known human lineages found across the continent. To the researchers, this could only mean one thing. Mungo Man might represent an extinct branch of humanity, a people who reached Australia before the ancestors of today's Aboriginal nations and who had vanished without a trace. The claim detonated through the scientific world. If true, it would mean multiple waves of human migration to Australia, possibly even contact with archaic species like Homo erectus from Indonesia. The newspapers called him the Lost Australian. Others whispered that the bones belonged not to the living ancestors of Aboriginal people, but to a forgotten race erased by time. But to the Aboriginal communities, this theory wasn't just wrong. It was an insult, because their traditions had never spoken of waves or replacement. 
Their stories told of continuous presence, an unbroken chain of life stretching back to the dreaming. To them, the scientists weren't revealing truth. They were contaminating it. And in a way, they were right. As the years passed, other researchers began to question the 2001 study. The data didn't add up. The samples were small. The methods primitive. PCR, for all its brilliance, was also a trap, a tool so sensitive that it could copy even the faintest whisper of modern contamination and present it as ancient truth. Then, two decades after the original test, a new generation of scientists from Griffith University's Research Center for Human Evolution decided to re-examine the evidence. Led by Professor David Lambert, they used a completely different approach, next generation sequencing and single primer extension, techniques powerful enough to separate authentic ancient DNA from modern interference. The process was painstaking. Each bone fragment was shaved, treated with sodium hypochlorite to strip away contamination, and analyzed for damage patterns only found in truly ancient samples. Chemical scars like cytosine deamination, a molecular fingerprint of time. What they found shattered the myth once and for all. The genetic sequences from Mungo Man were not from an extinct human lineage at all. They were European, specifically modern European haplogroups, strands of DNA that had nothing to do with Aboriginal Australians. The so-called extinct DNA had come from the researchers themselves. Among the samples was a perfect match to one of the original scientists, Gregory Adcock, co-author of the 2001 study. His DNA had mixed with the sample during handling, amplified millions of times by PCR, and mistaken for a 42,000-year-old genome. It was one of the most spectacular scientific misfires in modern archaeology, a ghost lineage born not from evolution, but from contamination. The reanalysis proved what the Aboriginal elders had always said. There was no earlier people, no vanished race, only continuity, a single unbroken story written in the blood of the first Australians. But the Griffith team's work didn't end there. While Mungo Man's DNA had been too degraded to recover fully, another nearby skeleton, WLH-4, found in the same region, still held enough material to reveal the truth. And with it, every rumor of an earlier, non-Aboriginal people finally crumbled. The findings from Griffith University marked a turning point, not just in science, but in identity. The supposed mystery of multiple migrations collapsed beneath the weight of evidence. The genetics were clear. The people who buried Mungo Man were not strangers to the land. They were the same people whose descendants still walk it today. Aboriginal Australians are among the world's oldest continuous cultures, with an unbroken genetic and cultural lineage stretching back more than 50,000 years. Their ancestors crossed into Sahul, the ancient landmass that once connected Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea at a time when most of the planet was still locked in ice. They adapted to desert, forest, floodplain, and fire. They survived global climate collapse, rising seas, and mass extinctions. And through it all, they kept the flame alive. The memory of how the world began, told through song, story, and ceremony. When Mungo Man was finally reburied in May 2022, the desert was silent. Elders gathered beside the lunette, the same curve of sand that had held him for 42,000 years. His bones were returned to the earth, not as specimens, but as kin. They placed him in an undisclosed location near Lake Mungo, along with Mungo Lady, whose cremated remains had been discovered years earlier. Two ancestors reunited beneath the sky that had watched them both in life. The reburial brought peace for some, and unease for others. Scientists knew that as technology advanced, future DNA methods might have revealed even more. Nuclear sequences, full genomes, and deeper insights into humanity's oldest migrations. 
But for the traditional owners, the decision was sacred. The bones were never meant to live in laboratories. They belonged to the land that had always carried their story. And maybe that is the real lesson Mungo Man left behind. Science can measure bones and sequence genomes. It can trace migrations across ice and sea, but it cannot measure belonging. That truth lives in songlines, the invisible maps that stretch across the desert, connecting people, ancestors, and creation in a single breath. Mungo Man's journey, from burial to exhumation to reburial, is the full circle of human story, discovery, understanding, and respect. His return to the Earth closed the oldest known chapter of Australian prehistory, but it also illuminated something deeper, that the ancient and the living are never truly separate. They exist together, layered like time itself. The world now recognizes what the Aboriginal people have always known, that their story is not a fragment of humanity's past, but the root of it. Theirs is the first chapter in the Human Chronicle, still being sung beneath the southern stars. The dunes of Willandra still glow red in the dying light. Wind moves across the salt flats where water once shimmered, carrying whispers of the first voices to ever speak here. 42,000 years ago, a man was laid to rest in this place, wrapped in ochre, blessed by hands that understood eternity. He sleeps again now in the land that raised him, but his story never sleeps. It lives in the blood of his descendants, in the rhythm of the earth, in the memory of all who listen. The oldest story on earth is still being told, and it begins with him. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and join us for the next video where we uncover more untold stories from humanity's past. Each episode takes us deeper into the mysteries of history, connecting us to the people and events that shaped our world.